You know, Bob, I, uh, I was just thinking. Well, you got a novelty right there, Frank. Huh? <laughs> Thanks. I was just thinking that it's quite a coincidence you coming back on the program tonight of all night. Why tonight? Why, it's Tchaikovsky's birthday. You mean Tchaikovsky the composer? No, 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 no. Tchaikovsky the flea. Tchaikovsky the flea? Yes, my little flea, my pal. Oh, he was a fine chap. One of the finest friends a fellow ever had. He was closer to me than a brother. We were just like that. Haven't I told you about him? No. Well, it's quite an interesting story, if you don't mind being bored. (laughs) After what's been going on around here tonight, I can stand anything. Well, it all dates back to the days when Morgan was in a circus. In a cage? Yes, I was... No. Well, anyway, we had a bunch of trained fleas with the circus, and Tchaikovsky was one of the trained fleas. One of the most intelligent animals you've ever seen. Without Tchaikovsky, Bozo, the talking dog, would have been a deaf mute. Tchaikovsky was the only flea in the troupe who could bite hard enough to make Bozo talk. So Tchaikovsky was a big success. He never missed the cue. Yes, this is all true, of course. Well, you know Morgan's reputation for the truth. Yes, that's why I asked. Yes. Well, uh, one day we played in the same town with Uncle Tom's cabin show, and the manager of the show heard about Tchaikovsky's knack of cueing Bozo, so he came over and put him under contract to cue one of his bloodhounds, who was lazy and always forgetting to chase Eliza across the ice. Well, Tchaikovsky was an immediate success, and as the month went on, he became the official cure for all the bloodhounds. He'd sit on their backs holding the script, and when the cue came, <laughs> Tchaikovsky would start things moving. After a while, well, you know how lazy some actors are. Yeah, don't be so self-conscious, Frank. <laughs> yes. Well, soon little Eva, Topsy, Uncle Tom, and even Simon Legree started kicking. They wanted Tchaikovsky to bite them on their cues. <laughs> And, uh, and so it was arranged. Yes, night after night, he would go hopping from Uncle Tom to Little Eva and vice versa, never missing a cue. After a while, it got so all the actors depended solely on Little Tchaikovsky for their cues. And then, one night, yes, <sighs> one night Tchaikovsky got a little drunk and came to the theater without his script. He missed every cue. He caused a terrible mix-up, and the show was so bad they had to close it. Little Tchaikovsky was inconsolable. He felt terrible. He was the most melancholy flea you've ever seen. You understand, Bob. Well, never having been a melancholy flea myself, I wouldn't know. Yes, well, believe me, he was a mighty depressed little flea. For months, no one could cheer him up, not even me, his pal. He used to say, Morg, it just seems something has gone out of me. I can't forget it. And it was true. That sparkle had gone out of his little eyes. His bites didn't have that old itch. How touchy. Well, finally, one day, in desperation, he said to me, Morg, I've decided to give up the stage. No, no, Chickoff, I said to him, not that. No, and what did Chickoff say? Well, he said, yes, I feel so bad, I think I'll go into pictures. So just to give him an idea of what he was in for, I took him to a movie to see a picture of Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> well, sir, when Chikowsky saw Rin Tin Tin on the screen, his little flea heart fluttered. Once more, his nostrils filled with the irresistible smell of the grease paint. Like an old fire horse, with an uncontrollable leap, he hopped up on the screen and started biting Rin Tin Tin. He bit and he bit and he bit, but naturally, being a screen, Rin Tin Tin couldn't feel it. Well, that was the last straw. Poor little Tchaikovsky was so brokenhearted that he limped back to me with a forsaken look in his eyes. He whispered, Morg, I'm a failure. And with that, little Tchaikovsky died in my arms. Morgan? I don't believe a word of it. Well, it's the truth, so help me if it isn't. I hope to fall in a dead faint right on this spot. Oh! <laughs> Quick, some water, water. Morgan's fainted. It's me again, Colonel Taylor. Well, who are you? I mean, oh, Carney. I'm sorry, honey. You'll have to excuse me. Two minutes without Morgan, and I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, now, what's the name of your song again? Then? I can dream, can't I? <laughs> we can listen, can't we? Sure enough, if Martha Wilson will play, will he? I sure will, won't I? I mean, uh, I will. <laughs> well, go ahead. Well, why don't you? And he did. <laughs> I can breathe, can I? 
pretend that I'm locked in the bend of your embrace. Our dreams are just like wine, and I am drunk with mine. I'm aware my heart is a sad affair. There's much disillusion there, but I can dream that I, that I adore you. Although we are oceans apart, I can't make you open your heart, but I can dream. But I can dream. 